I'm Insomniac, and this is a Vostok with a long name I can't remember, so check the title. Before I dive into this review, I'd like to give a giant shout out to Jim Berry for sending this watch in. Uh, he has sent in most of the watches that I've been reviewing lately on this channel. Greatly appreciated. If you have any watches you'd like to send in to be reviewed on this channel, email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I will let you know where to send the watches in. I will review them, ensure them, and send them back. All right, with that out of the way, let's get into the watch piece by piece. The case on this piece is very well done. Polished completely, including the case back. Uh, the machining looks good, and I really like the lugs. They come down at a straight angle, but rather than having a point where the tops and sides of the lugs meet, there's another angled portion in between. And I appreciate the basic lack of bezel here. There's a lot going on under the anti-reflective mineral crystal, so in order to keep the watch size down to something wearable, basically the entire diameter here is just dial. The design of the screw-down case back has some interesting texture to it, with the deeply engraved holes around the outer edge, then information about the watch further in, including a limited production number. This one is apparently number 645 out of 3000. The pushers on this watch match the case perfectly, and the crown is the perfect size for this case and has a great grip to it. Honestly, the only thing I think this case lacks is some kind of logo or design on the face of the crown. It's large enough that without something on the crown, the crown does look pretty plain. The dial on this piece is very busy due to the many complications found in this watch. The base of the dial is a three-section black dial, flat black where the GMT scale is, then a nice tight concentric circular pattern where the hour markers are, then a slightly raised flat black section in the center where the applied Vostok logo is. Other than the Vostok logo at 3 o'clock, the only applied markers on this dial are for the hours, done in a nice polished stick style. You have an internal bezel of sorts around the very edge of the dial which shows you all of the city representations for the 24 time zones, Directly under that is the plus minus scale to show you what the hour difference is between those cities and GMT. Directly below that scale you have the most useless printing on the dial. You have very small printed indices for the minute track which wouldn't be so bad if not for the fact that there's an unnecessary quarter second track between the minute markers which makes no sense being that there is no centralized running second hand or chronograph on this watch. Next you have the three sub dials. All three are slightly recessed into the dial and have a nice concentric circular pattern as their base. The one at 9 o'clock is a running second sub-dial, while the one at 12 o'clock is your local time clock in 24-hour format, and the one at 6 o'clock is your alarm set time. And inside that alarm sub-dial toward the bottom you have a date window. Last you have the hands. The large minute and hour hands, as well as the minute and hour hands in the local time and alarm sub-dials, are all a simple broad sword shape, while the running second hand and city hand are both stick style hands, all of them done in polished steel with loom filling minus the city hand. Overall, I like the look of the style and despite being fairly busy, everything is well spaced and neatly laid out, which helps the dial not seem overwhelming. The only minus to the features here is on the large minute hand. There seems to be some kind of stain or imperfection on the hand, no idea how that got there. This watch has a few usable complications. Starting with the simplest of the three complications, the date at six o'clock is a small black numeral on a white disc the font is simple and easy to read and the contrast is great, so other than when it's being obstructed by the alarm hands, it does its job well. Next up is the GMT function, which takes up the largest amount of complication real estate on the dial. At 12 o'clock you have your local time clock, which reads in 24 hour format, while the large pointer hand on the main dial shows you which city the local time is being displayed for. For example, you can see here that I have the local time set to New York. What's cool here is that if you press the pusher above the crown, you can jump to the next city and the local time clock moves an hour in advance to reflect the local time in that time zone. Or press the pusher under the crown and the hand will move backwards to whichever city you select and the local time moves an hour backwards to reflect that time zone. Lastly at 6 o'clock you have another clock to show you what time the alarm is set to and at that set time the watch does sound an alarm. Other than the date though I find a lot of flaws with the complications on this watch. Starting with the GMT function I love the idea of having a local time subdial and a push button selector for the time zones that automatically adjust the local time clock. But either this movement is poor or this particular watch is defective. 
because I've reset the local time about five times in the last week. I set the local time on that subdial to the same time as the main hands, being that my local time zone is New York City, and I'm currently in that time zone. And as you can see here, the local time on the subdial is way off. I read the instructions multiple times, don't see any flaws in how I'm setting it, so it appears as though it just isn't keeping time with the watch. Then you have the alarm. I spent more time than I'd like to admit with the manual to this watch, just trying to figure out how to set and engage the alarm, which speaks to how not intuitive the complications are to use on this watch, but that's not the part that's disappointing. Once I got it nailed down with the instructions, I noticed two things. One, the alarm is quiet and ineffective. Might be good enough for a small daily reminder for an upcoming meeting or something, but if you want to try to use it to wake up in the morning or get up from a quick nap, uh, you'd sleep right through it. It's barely noticeable even when you're awake. Second, despite several attempts to follow the directions to the letter included in the manual, I cannot get the alarm clock to stay at the desired alarm time. It moves with the rest of the movement. So for me, it's impossible to set the alarm time well in advance and have it sound exactly when I want to. This could be user error, and it very well might be, but if it is, I'm still subtracting points because I've used, reviewed, and owned many watches with tons of complications, and never have I had this hard of a time setting a complication on a watch. It either doesn't work or the directions are piss poor. So sadly, this watch had the potential to get a great score here because all three complications on this watch are useful. But on this particular watch, only two of the three complications are easily or effectively usable. The loom on this watch is just okay. There are a few issues here. First of all, let's talk about what is and isn't illuminated. The large main hands have loom, but there are no loom markers of any kind on the main dial to give you a reference point as to where the large hand set is pointing. The local time subdial and alarm subdials, on the other hand, have loom in the hands and have a small dot of loom at 12, 3, 6, and 9, so you have a general reference of where those hands are in the dark. Then you have the second hand, which is the most confusing. At first, I thought the white tip on this running second hand was loom. Well, here it is with direct loom charge, and as you can see, it's not. It's just white paint. Yet the subdial for the seconds has the same 12, 3, 6, and 9 reference points illuminated as the other two subdials. Why? Without some kind of loom on the hand itself, you can't even guess the seconds here. Just as disappointing though is the loom itself. Interestingly enough, the tiny dots of loom for the reference points in the subdials shine brighter than the larger loom fillings inside the hands, and for standard light to dark applications, it doesn't charge well, and with a direct loom charge like you see here, it doesn't last very long at all. Time at a glance is pretty good considering the fact that there's so much on this dial. The hands are large, they're the correct length for the style, and they have sharp points to them, and the contrast between the polished steel and white printing against the black dial is very good. The two small issues here are number one, obviously there's a lot on the dial, so although Vostok did a good job of arranging it all neatly so it doesn't seem cluttered, there is a lot to draw your eye away from the actual time when you glance at the watch. And two, the unnecessary quarter second track between the minute track that I pointed out earlier definitely slows you down a little bit when trying to find the exact minute because it clogs up that minute track with three extra lines between each minute index which would be forgivable if this watch were a chronograph or if it were at least a mechanical movement with a central running second hand but it's neither so that's just wasted lines getting in the way either way it's not hard to tell the time on this watch so pretty good accuracy is possibly excellent with this piece I'll have to explain that one. First of all, the time on the main hands has been accurate to the minute since I first set it more than a week ago. And for the small second subdial, the movement looks crisp and solid with every stop of the second hand actually landing on each index in the second subdial. Where I have to subtract points is with the giant question mark that is the local time subdial at 12 o'clock. I can't think of any logical scenario or reason why the time on the local time subdial would be that far off other than a severe defect in the movement. So I won't go crazy on the subtraction here, being that the main time is definitely accurate, but it would have been nice if that 24 hour clock at 12 o'clock were running in sync with the rest of the watch. The strap on this watch is great. When I first took a look at it, it looked suspiciously plain, but upon further inspection, it lacks stitching like most leather watch bands, but this one has a really cool raised center that gives it an embossed look. And the lack of any kind of contrast stitching adds an overall simplicity to the band that helps balance out the complex business of the dial. The buckle matches the case perfectly and has the Vostok logo engraved into it. Now the strap has a great thickness to it while being pliable and flexible. And I found it to be extremely comfortable on the wrist. Just a great strap for this watch. 
Okay, so in terms of value, I'm giving this watch a benefit of the doubt score. What I mean by that is Vostok isn't Tudor or Rolex or something like that, but they definitely make a quality product. And I can't imagine that the local time clock doesn't run properly on all of these. There's a small chance that it's user error, but I'm almost positive it's not. And even if it's the movement itself, uh, it's probably just this particular watch. I really doubt that they're all having this issue. So I'm gonna rate the value of this piece based on this particular model working correctly. As of the time of this review, I saw this watch on one reputable site for $329. For that price, we're talking about a limited production watch with solid construction, three potentially usable complications, and a very wearable size. Based on my experience with this piece, again, assuming that the issues I'm having are just with this particular one, it's not a steal at $329 unless you collect Vasta because it is a quartz powered Vostok watch. It's really not anything absolutely spectacular, but it's also not a bad value either. And particularly if you're looking for a watch with an alarm function, which in analog watches is fairly rare, uh, that's a pretty cool complication and this is a pretty cool watch. All right, so that was the Vostok Still don't remember the name of it. Something, 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 alarm, whatever. Anyway, thank you again to Jim for sending this in. Big shout out, really appreciate that. Uh, if you have one of these, uh, certainly leave a comment. Tell everybody what you think about it. Yeah, that's about it. I'll see you all at the next one.